Awesome. Well, congratulations. 50th anniversary. Yeah. Big celebration. I'm not even 50 yet. I mean, kidding. I'm not. I'm not. She's not. <laughs> My much, much older sister. The best <laughs> intro to the show. That was a good moment. It was a good moment. That was ad lib, too. Um, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's right. good. Which yeah, moment? Yeah. When Brady comes in, he's flirting with Eve, and then I come out of, you know, my old apartment, and I'm like, this is my much, much older sister. It was scripted. My older sister and said, add much, much older. Yeah. Because I am. And, and then I was like, like, don't you have to go to your daughter's high school graduation, Eve? Yes, but anyway. I have to sleep with my daughter's boyfriend, okay? Got to be a little flirting. Such a cat. It happens. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you guys had such catty conversations for the longest time, but then after... After Paige died. Yeah, and um, I was really happy to see that go, you know, shift that dynamic because, you know, blood is thicker than water, and yes. um, he does really care and love Teresa. And I, I'm sorry we didn't have more scenes with the baby. I mean, we could have had so much more stuff. And we will. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Eve's just temporarily gone. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Keep hashtagging Team Teve. Yeah. Team Eve. I like it. I like it. We're there making it go. happen. Bringing there it back go. on the there social you media. You know you love this duo. But I really love what's going on with your story right now. I love that Eric's finally not being such so snarky. Eric being Brady. Oh, Brady. Brady. Sorry, I get confused. Anyway. Though, if Brady, Eric he... Brady doesn't need to be my cousin anymore, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty pretty. But let me he's ask you. Pretty, let me ask you about that because do you think do you think Teresa's really changed or has is it, we're going to see some old Teresa still come out at times? No, you know I think that she's really changed, but at the same time, your um, personality makeup is. It's like DNA, you know, it doesn't really shift. So I think there's going to be a thing where it's like, if I love you, you're on my good side. And if you mess with the people I love, you better watch out, brother, sister, bitch, whoever. Um, yeah, yeah, I love them. Like but, I, but, you know, yeah, I like that, though. I like that about Teresa, you know, and I think the audience will because you like the girl that you could root for but then kind of stands up when, you know, like telling Kate to get off her ass and get her own coffee. It was brilliant. I liked it. It was so great, and you played it beautifully, and Kate was like, it's like what? Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. um, this one needs to win the Emmy, though. Oh, so, yes. We're yeah. Gonna we want to talk like, about that. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's start the campaign now. Um, I told her that, well, actually, I don't know if you know this. I told the whole cast, I was like, if she submits support. Y'all are giving me a hot flash. I was like, my, my, my Emmy submission might just be like, Jen Lilly, vote for Cassie DePaiva. And I, I literally was going to put that if we were in the same category. That was going to be my Emmy submission. Yeah. This one. Well, Ka nailed Cassie, it. talk about that because you did nail it, yes. and you nailed it for a Go. long time because you cried for days and weeks. And for days, but yeah, talk that's about why it's called days of our lives. Exactly, but um, what were the challenges in that? Because you still have—I mean, it was so convincing, and you brought up all those emotions over and over again. I, you know, I've played grief before on soaps because I've been doing it forever and ever. Mm -hmm. But this was a, a sustained beat, and it was really honest and really real. So. You know, I got to play opposite people that raised the bar for me. You know, look into this beautiful well of eyes, and feeling the loss. And um, I love true, and so I could just make that as genuine as possible. And um, the writing was there, and I just did everything I could to support that. And it's easy, it's easy to work in that environment because there was so much love and support. And I mean, we work at light speed, but. Um, the writing was there. I had such great but I also think support. Your son is true's age, right? Yeah, Around I mean, I could totally. So just, I could, uh, you could totally go there. So you just, I just went there, and it. I think it paid off, and I think it that, was raw um, and amazing yeah. and captivating, and she needs to win. And I got to work opposite A Martinez, and yeah. you know, you, you, it was. I never. We hadn't worked together since One Like to Live, and even then, it wasn't really that kind of relationship, but. I think within that, those those scenes are, are what I submitted. Where good, those scenes where you come in and you're like, you're like, oh gosh, who is this guy? You told it, it was those beats were played really nicely, and they were off of her going, this is <laughs> um here's the pa goodwill pages, guy, <laughs> Paige's father. Okay, you know it was, it, it was, it was. Those nice. scenes were amazing. It was a, it was a gift to me. Well, I thought um, Eve scenes with. Um, 
Justin were, were great. They were like different from every other scene. Too. Every yeah. scene that Cassidy and the Pye scenes Pye with Marlena, where you know she's because she has experienced grief, and mm-hmm. I yeah. think that grief is something that is so relatable with our fan base because you know you're, they're sitting there watching. I, I got so many emails and tweets saying. Oh my gosh! I lost my daughter a year and a half ago in a violent situation. You captured it. I had to, I, sometimes I couldn't watch because it was too painful for me because that's what I was experiencing. Yeah. So I'm glad I was able to um, accommodate. And I think storylines like that are what make days stay on the air for 50 years. You know, our ratings are higher than they've been in a year and a half. They're up. We're thriving, and I think that you know, days is in a really healthy place, and it is because. Days continually write storylines that are so relatable and realistic. Um, Jen, um, can you can you tease what's ahead uh, with Teresa and Basic Black and what kind of fashion designer Teresa? I am wearing, wearing Basic, basic Black. Oh. I'm wearing Basic Jeez. Black in support of my sister. Um, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with that storyline. Um, teasing. Let's see. Well, Teresa is sticking around with basic black um you know that is the old teresa where it comes through in the best light right where she's a fighter she is a fighter um and she will fight and scratch her way to the top but now she does it with a smile (laughs) instead of a poker stick or a poker fireplace poker (laughs) anyway poor um, poor john yeah poor john John. (laughs) but yeah um (laughs) teresa yeah he had it coming (laughs) he had it coming (laughs) <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, Teresa is still doing that. Um, obviously, that might help her get a little closer to Brady. She's got her eyes on the prize obsessively. Teresa's got a bit of an obsessive personality. I like that about her, though. So yeah, she's she's got her eyes on the prize with Basic Black, with Brady Black. But you know, with her kid, the, the baby is life changing, and it's it's yeah. forced her to grow up. And of course, there's always going to be elements of that character that are going to, somebody's going to push those buttons where yeah. the true Teresa is going to come out. But she realizes yeah. that what's important, and that is for Tate to have a happy um, yeah, childhood. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you love Brady. And I can tease that there's a lot of comedy coming on uh, on the uh, design front because I might be recruiting Anne as backup. Not, oh, Can well, you we imagine? Need, Just go that. ahead and imagine. We need that. Nah. Yeah. Teresa, yeah. Kate, Nicole, and Anne. Yeah. Or martinis involved. That's all I'm going Yeah. Okay, martinis good. and some whoop ass. <laughs> oh, good. That'd be good. <laughs> well, talk, good. talk about some of the scenes with John Aniston, who I know is like the nicest oh guy gosh. in the world, but his lines, especially directed at you, being a two bit <laughs> tramp and Oh, my gosh. First line son. to me is like, yeah. you ordered a hooker. <laughs> was like, it really? Oh, yes. When I first came knocking on the door, it was like, Okay. That's really funny. Um, John Aniston, love him. Love working with him. I mean, come on. He's such an icon. And uh, he had this great line that aired, I guess it aired three months ago or so, when Teresa fakes that she broke her ankle. And I remember seeing this in the script and taking a picture of the script and and, and texting it to Eric Martzoff and Suzanne Rogers and John Aniston. And I was like, "Um, did anyone else catch this? Okay, here's the line. Victor walks in, I'm terrible at impersonations, but let's do this. And he's like, what happened to you? And I'm like, oh, I, I um, broke my ankle. And he's like, funny, I thought the first thing to go on you would have been your kneecaps. <laughs> I was like, what? Like when I read that in the script, I was like, are you kidding me? So when we were doing that scene, John Aniston and I get along really well. He's like, he's like, John, could you move down stage a little? I don't want to look you in the eye. And I was like, thank you. Like, And I, we could not look at each other because we were both just like... <laughs> That's, I can't believe that made it to air. This face. This is what's happening. This is what John's looking at. <laughs> that was what was happening. I mean, is there any more of that with Victor coming up? Oh, yeah, please. I mean, Victor and Teresa, you know, they love, hate each other. She she calls him Vic. Vicky. Vic. Vicky. 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 That's awesome. We need a, we need a smush name, Victor and Teresa. The Kisa. We did also want to ask, do you, do you remember your first scene on the show? I don't know if it was, was that your very first scene on the show with Victor? You speaking? No, Bo- no, no, Both no. of you, like My your very first, first scene. My first scene was with um, Sean Christian, where I come and I, for my throat surgery, it's like, hi, Eve Donovan. <laughs> but your first scene, that was your first line with Victor, though, right? When he was like. Oh, yeah. Who I knock on it. He opens. He opens the door. Sees me and yells over his shoulder. Who ordered a hooker? It's like, oh gosh, it's nice to see you haven't changed, and I mean that in a good way. Oh, yeah. How about you, Jen? I don't remember um, his first line to me. I think I was just like, oh my god, I'm working with Jen. I was nervous. I think he probably said something like, who the hell are you? 
I'm like, mm, who are you? You're at my door. I remember he was at Teresa's apartment, and all I know is I was like, well, your character was probably all coked up or something. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Who were, who, what, do you remember your first scene? Period. My first scene. Show? Period. I come out of the mysterious woods, <laughs> and I meet JJ Casey Moss, oh, yeah. and he's talking to Rory, Kevin Riggins, amazing, one of my favorite people ever. And I go, they're talking about their weed stash, and I go, walk out of the woods. Is it really that good? That was my one line in my first episode. And I then it was you like the fabulous back. too. What did you have? She probably had some leather jacket on. No, I had Bigel. a jean jacket. Looking hot. Looking hot. <laughs> Is it really that good? That good? Yeah. 